Good morning. You know, uh, we've talked in earlier videos about our, our dog collars and identification of dog collars. This morning I wanted to go over some of the equipment that we normally take with us on a cat hunt. And, you know, I, I stress cat hunting and bear hunting, but the fact is any hound would be, any of this equipment would be applicable to any hound, any long range hound that you're currently using. Even the little beagles deserve some uh, protection from being lost. And we've all, we've all lost dogs at one point or another, and, it, and it's heartbreaking, it's nerve wracking, uh, and it's really not fair to the dog. For the most part, we can recover these dogs if we use the proper equipment. The first thing I'd like to talk about this morning is uh, having no collar on your dog at all. And that's old school. And when we had that 50 years ago, we just simply looked for them until we found them. We, uh, we drove around for days, sometimes even weeks, at great expense to find these dogs. And fortunately, I had never lost a dog, but it was quite an expensive proposition to get them back in many cases. But now things have changed. You know, with the advent of the telemetry collar uh, years ago, we started out, people call it the beeper collar or whatever you refer it to, refer to it as. And then we've gone to our GPS technology. We're now we're using our GPS technology to find our dogs. There's advantages and drawbacks to both. And I'd like to go over a few of those with you, if I may. The telemetry collar will give us the direction of the dog, but not necessarily the location of the dog. If we're high and the dog is low, we may not get a signal or vice versa. The dog's on a mountain and we're on a mountain, it sounds like he's right next to us if we're, if we're looking at each other because it's all line of sight. So the telemetry collar, although very effective and long range in its capacity, its drawback is we don't know the exact location, only the direction. An advantage of the telemetry collar is the battery life. The battery life on some of these collars, like this particular collar here by West Coast Telemetry, this is a 16,000 hour battery. And that equates to 667 days if you do the math. If you don't find them in two years, the chances are you probably won't find them. The drawbacks is it has a little weight to it and not applicable in many cases to your, to your smaller hounds. However, the Marshall collar, which accepts AA batteries, has extended range and battery life. And there's also a warning signal on here. It starts to blink red, when, and you'll still have approximately two weeks of battery life left. I like the Marshall collar. It's one of the best in the industry. However, there's many makes and, and, and brands and sizes. If you do your homework, you'll find one that'll work for you. My personal preference is the Marshall Collar because of its size. Another thing I like about the Marshall Collar, there's no magnet that turns it off and on. It's a swipe of a magnet. And you simply swipe the collar and it turns it on. You swipe it again with the magnet and it turns it off. So that's a great feature. That and the replaceable batteries that I mentioned are a very nice feature. And its size is very compact and its strength is extremely well, extremely good. Uh, it's got great range and good longevity. Marshall Collar is something I would recommend. Although there's many fine manufacturers out there. So we've talked a little bit about the telemetry collars. Let's talk about the receiver. You know, it, like anything else, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a matrix of, of receivers. There's, there's all kinds of receivers. This happens to be a QTR-10, and it picks up 999 different collars and different frequencies in the 217 range. 217 frequency range, there's 216, there's a whole gamut, 219s, 221s. There's a lot of different frequency ranges. They'll all work well for you depending on what you have for a transmitting collar. Uh, but the receiver is only as good as two things, the batteries and the operator. So don't be afraid to play with it. This is a folding antenna. 
opens right up for you with a little practice. I've been using them for over 30 years and I still don't get it right. <laughs> you also have on here an attenuator so you can reduce the strength of the signal within the unit itself and that will allow you to more closely get to your get to your collar, get to your dog. Um, I had an occasion one time in a Florida swamp where I, the transmitter was ripped off a dog neck and I never realized it until I got back to the truck. When I got back to the truck, he still had the collar on, but no transmitter. So I told my hunting partner we would go back the next day and find the transmitter and he looked at me like I had six heads. When in fact we walked right up to it and it was under six inches of water. He stuck his hand in there and pulled out the transmitter. That's how close you can get with these telemetry systems if you practice them and use them on a regular basis. Today, we've gotten away from it because we're more dependent on our GPS systems, which have limitations that I'll go over with you in just a minute. The range on these telemetry systems varies, and it varies extensively with terrain, foliage, snow cover, location of the dog, snowpack. Uh, you know, you could get 12 miles or you might not get a mile, depending on that because of the line of sight communications with your transmitter and your receiver. But for the most part, the range is greater than that of the GPS in most cases. Uh, and we're going to talk about that here now. In recent times, most of us have gone to the GPS system, which is a great, great system. In fact, I don't think I'd let a dog loose today, turn them loose without one of these on my dog. All right, uh, they're very effective, very accurate. They not only tell you the direction of the dog, but they will also tell you what, how the distance of the dog, which is important, and a matrix of other things. Uh, what he's doing, whether he's uh, sitting, running, treeing, Okay, all of those things. Distance traveled, traveled, average speed, and anything else you might want to know. The handheld itself does a super job, okay, at locating your dog. I've got a medium range antenna on here right now. It comes from uh, Garmin with a, with a shorter antenna, and then this, this is what I call my medium range antenna. Uh, it extends the range of the unit somewhat, and then on my snowmobile, I keep a long range antenna and on my truck, I have another one that I use, which is also a long range antenna. And that extended up sometimes I've gotten as far as six miles. They advertise them at greater distances than that, but our terrain here in Maine is, is somewhat difficult for any reception. So the, uh, the, the six mile range is about all you're gonna need. Your dog shouldn't be more than six miles away from you. Uh, I use one of these dog collars on every dog that I turn loose. And the reason for it is I want to come home with them. And for the most part, they will work. There are glitches. Sometimes they're not charged properly. Sometimes the signal drops. But 90% of the time or more, 95% of the time or more, they're very effective, very efficient. A long-range antenna on the Garmin. And these are these are 15s, which also have the shocking ability, but they also come with the TT10s and 5s that don't have the shocking ability, just the locating. Um, great feature on this is you do have the ability to tone your dog or correct him in some way, as long as you're receiving a signal on your handheld. So it's very important that we try to keep them in range, and that long-range antenna will help us do that. And it really doesn't matter if you have a beagle, or a, a big hard running hound, like you would have on bears. These are great little features because there's times when that little beagle can get out of range on you. And if he does, that extended range antenna can be a tremendous help. Uh, you don't have that, that lost dog feeling. I, I use these collars literally every day. I'm quite familiar with the units. Uh, and for the most part, I don't have a problem. And when I do, I'll tell you Garmin is, is super. You know, make a phone call to Garmin Service and they'll walk you right through any problem that you might have. They've been very helpful to me in the past and, and over the years that I've, I've used these systems. 
and I'm very thankful for him to be able to do that. A couple little things that I picked up over the years is I use a little name tag that fits right over my one inch collar on the GPS collar. Now, in the event that his ID collar is lost and the GPS collar remains on the dog, there's a way to identify that collar with my name and two phone numbers. Just a little something that you might want to look into. Um, I can get you the name of the company that uh, manufactures this little tag. The numbers are engraved, so there's no paint to wear off, and you'll be able to you'll be able to put that right on your collar. Okay. Now, something else I want to discuss, and the the reason that I'm going to do this is because sometimes we get lazy and we don't do the things that are necessary to keep our dog safe, and that is. keeping both collars on the dog. We know what the features and benefits of the telemetry collar are. We know what the features and benefits are of the Garmin. And we combine these two together on that dog. We've got more of a fail-safe system going for us. In other words, when that battery dies on that GPS collar, or something happens, there's a glitch in the satellites or the system or the unit itself, and it stops working, without having a backup on the dog, we're risking the loss of that animal. Now, it happens, and, it, and it's happened here recently in Maine. We had a very fine hound lost for four days because there wasn't a telemetry collar on the dog, and the GPS collar stopped working. There's only one, re there's two reasons, actually, that we wouldn't use both. One, we don't have both. Or two, laziness of not putting it on. And I'm guilty of that myself. Sometimes I just think it's going to be a quick and easy run and I don't put a telemetry collar on. Or I feel like I'm familiar with the terrain and I don't put the telemetry collar on. But I'll tell you something, when I get up into the big woods and I do that out of state on many occasions and there's no roads for 40 miles, I use both collars. I use my GPS and my telemetry. A lot of us have these telemetry units that we put away once we cut out, once we came out with the garments, once we came out with the GPS, we stopped using them. Maybe even offer them up for sale or they're collecting dust in your collar bag. Break them out and use both. It only takes an extra minute and it might save you a ton of time and money. In my collection of collars, I also have sport dog collars. They're e-collars by Sport Dog. I think the model numbers here are 3850 or 3820, but they're small, they're light, and so is the transmitter. It has either a vibrator or a tone system that you can set up on it. It will accommodate up to six different collars. You can use on six different dogs simultaneously, all color-coded and color-coded to the transmitter. It's a fine little collar, especially for use around the house or yard training and when they're and when they're when they're small get them used to that tone so that later on when you get to the bigger collars they'll be familiar with the vibration or the tone used in correcting them so uh sport dog makes a super collar they're they're very accommodating uh, i do recommend the small light collars from sport dog you know the equipment that we talked about today is wonderful but it's only as good not only as we use it, but as we charge it. Um, it's very important to keep these collars charged. A little something that I do is I put them on the charger immediately when I get home. When I get home from a hunt, after unloading the hounds and making sure they've got food and water, I put these chargers on the collar. And that way, I know that the next morning or the two days later, whenever it is, these collars are fully charged. That's very important because if we sometimes don't get them ready at night, we don't get them ready when we get home, the next day we forget, we're not sure, and the next thing you know, you're out there with a half-charged collar. And if you've, got a, if you've got a half a dozen of them, make sure that they're all charged. And then double check your handheld, and which you can very easily do 
when you turn it on, you turn the collar on, check the battery life of your collar with your handheld and make sure you got a full load of coal. Because if you don't, make sure you do before you turn the dog loose. Which brings me to another point, and that's your mobile charger. Please have one of these in, have one of these, have multiple of these in your vehicle. That mobile charger will charge that handheld or the collar while you're on the road, on your way to the hunt or even on your way back. Uh, I like to keep my handheld on a charger for the most part, if I'm in my vehicle, it's on the charger so that I've got a full charge. So if I have to leave the vehicle and go into the woods for an extended period of time, I can keep track of things right here on my handheld with a full charge on my battery. So it only takes an extra second or two to throw this mobile charger into your vehicle and use it. Don't just put it in the center console and forget about it. And make sure when you get home at night, those collars are charged. It will make a world of difference to you at some point during your hunting. And we know, we again, we talk about cat and bear hunting, but specifically any type of hunting, make sure your collars are fully charged. They're useless when they go dead. And then you're back to ground zero, which is just the ID collar and waiting for the phone call. And you're back to old school, driving the roads, looking for your dogs. So please, maybe you can take out one of these little hints, tips, and use them in finding your dog or keeping your dog safe so that uh, we have a more enjoyable hunt in a super year. Thank you very much for listening. Please tune into my channel, uh, subscribe to it, click on the bell, and uh, hope to see you in future videos. Perhaps you picked up just one little thing today that you'll use in the future that'll keep your hound safe. Thanks again. Have a great day.